Now listen, I've been out here all this time and I haven't been complaining about anything yet, so I think it's time to go into the complaint department. This is just a series of things that are pissing me off, okay? A series of things that are pissing me off, because I don't have pet peeves. I have major psychotic fucking hatreds, okay? And for our last story, we have this. Dangerous operations at Fukushima's reactor number four could ignite atomic chain reaction, threatening to trigger a new and possibly more devastating nuclear disaster than the original or ongoing one at the Fukushima plant in Japan. A risky plan to remove fuel rods from a damaged reactor building could unleash an unprecedented level of radiation. Now, this is according to the experts. They say it could be 14,000 times the amount of radiation released by the bombing of Hiroshima. Now, this is according to the experts. They say it could be 14,000 times the amount of radiation released by the bombing of Hiroshima. Now, I'm no expert on nuclear physics or atomic chain reactions, so I can't say whether or not it's a good idea to try to move these things into a more stable location. So uh, I really don't know what to say about this, but definitely be aware of this because you remember last time when they had the original Fukushima incident, they just raised the, uh, the level of acceptable radiation here in the U.S. So it's like, oh, you know, we just upped it from this to that. Definitely be aware of this because you remember last time when they had the original Fukushima incident, they just raised the uh, the level of acceptable radiation here in the U.S. So it's like, oh, you know, we just upped it from this to that. You know, that's perfectly fine. If you start feeling a little sick or your kids start turning weird colors, that's perfectly fine. And not to make light of the situation, it's a very uh, uh, it's unstable situation, not, no pun intended. A volcano has erupted in Kagoshima Prefecture, southwestern Japan. The smoke from Mount Sakurajima has reached a height of 5,000 meters. Weather officials say the volcano erupted at 4.31 p.m. on Sunday. Large rocks spewed from its mouth. A pyroclastic flow about one kilometer long appeared on the mountain. Visibility in Kagoshima City became poor before 5 p.m. due to falling ash. Drivers had to turn on their headlights. Officials are calling on farmers and operators of public transport to prepare for more ash from the eruption. My eyes are hurting. The sky became dark with volcanic ash. Sakurajima has been active in recent years. The officials say there are no signs of major volcanic activity at present, but they are still urging caution. In 1986, Chernobyl, Russia had one of the worst nuclear meltdowns in the history of the world. And new research shows that trees in the area are still being affected by it. While studying the growth of local Scots pine trees, the researchers were able to identify mutations caused by the nuclear fallout. The tree rings, which are reportedly easier to read than other species that grow in the area, provide a record of the tree's life. Co-author of the study, Tim Mousseau from the University of South Carolina said, Our field results were consistent with previous findings that were based on much smaller sample sizes. They are also consistent with the many reports of genetic impacts to these trees. Many of the trees show highly abnormal growth forms reflecting the effects of mutations and cell death resulting from radiation exposure. This study is the largest one of its kind, looking at over 100 Scots pines from 12 different sites. The researchers hope to do a similar study in the Fukushima region of Japan, which suffered a major nuclear disaster in 2011. For 25 years, this has been no man's land an evacuated exclusion zone surrounding the damaged reactor of Chernobyl's nuclear power station. But it's very familiar territory for a team of scientists who risk their health to come back here. They want to find out what happened to the life that was left behind after the disaster. These researchers have spent the last decade investigating Chernobyl's wildlife. They return each year to catch and examine birds and other animals in the exclusion zone so they can find out how they've been affected by the radiation. In this post-apocalyptic landscape, it feels like nature has won, but appearances can be deceptive. Parts of the exclusion zone are actually quite beautiful. There's this eerie kind of wilderness here. And that's perhaps where this myth that wildlife is flourishing in the zone has come from. But the biologists who actually study here say that that's exactly what it is, a myth. A reading 2,000 times what it should be. This small patch of forest is one of the most contaminated areas. Of course, when you 
go to this Chernobyl zone, there is a very special feeling because there are uh, contaminated areas where you don't see the contamination and uh, you don't observe it uh, directly, but you actually observe it indir indirectly by the less bird singing in the mornings. Other scientists say that the absence of man has actually brought lots more wildlife into the zone. But this team claims to be uncovering just how damaging living here really is. The main message that we're trying to get across, uh, the main finding that we've found not only in the birds but also in the insects and with the mammals as well, is that there is a very significant impact uh, of this contamination on both the abundance of these organisms and the biodiversity, the numbers of species that exist, and it's directly proportional to the level of background contamination. In the nearby town of Pripyat, they were preparing to celebrate the opening of their fairground. Then the accident happened. This ferris wheel was never used. The landscape here might take hundreds of years to fully recover, and the lessons of Chernobyl are only now beginning to be learnt. But they could alter the entire nuclear debate. Victoria Gill, BBC News, Chernobyl. Okay, Asia, two and a half years since the Fukushima disaster, looks like Japan could be ready to restart some of its 50 nuclear reactors. We felt that putting our users in mortal danger for a quick buck was the right move. But on the ground, though, sentiment is still strongly opposed to the restarting of nuclear power. CNBC's Sri Jagaraja recently traveled to the area and files this report. Opponents of nuclear energy don't come tougher than Fukushima cattle farmer Masami Yoshizawa. I am cowboy and resistance. Fueled by coffee, cigarettes and love for his herd of Wagyu cattle, this 59-year-old rancher, like many hit by the 2011 triple disaster, wants Tokyo to pull the plug on atomic power. We clearly know what will happen if there's another earthquake and another tsunami. We need to end nuclear power plants in Japan and I think people have learned that. The meltdown at TEPCO's Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant, triggered by the earthquake and tsunami of March 2011, cost him his livelihood, his once prized stock rendered worthless after being contaminated by radiation through water and pastures. Yet he and farmers like him continue to defy government orders to cull these animals, relying on donations to keep the cows at Kibo no Bokujo, Ranch of Hope, fed and sheltered. Cow terrorism, as Yoshizawa calls it, is his way of directing public opinion against the Abe administration's plan to switch some reactors back on. In the heydays, Yoshizawa would earn as much as $14,000 from a single Wagyu cow at market. But it was a cash cow of an entirely different variety that led to Fukushima's problems. It was old, so the people uh, and TEPCO knew very well there's a risk because of if tsunami may happen, there could be a catastrophe. But actually it is old, but it is uh, cash cow. If it is run, it is almost depleted. So while they are operating it, it uh, creates more cash. We felt that putting our users in mortal danger for a quick buck was the right move. Japan's government admits mistakes were made, but led to expensive and important lessons learned. Over all else, safety is paramount. We felt that putting our users in mortal danger for a quick buck was the right move. Our belief is that for the reactors which are deemed safe, we will restart them. The rebel farmers and the cows they protect face an uncertain future. But one thing is clear, nuclear power is unwelcome. But one thing is clear, nuclear power is unwelcome. The Abe administration, riding high in the opinion polls, faces one of its biggest tests yet in convincing a fearful and resentful public as it considers the switch back to nuclear power. Thank you very much, everybody.
Okay, enough is enough. Why don't you find some other sap to read you news articles while you sit around on your ass all 